protect the land from brigands and monsters. Raise your weapons high as you shout your rallying cry. All tray! <laughs> Thank you for joining us today at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Delp. And I'm Kevin Delp. Old Trey is a cooperative scenario-based game for two to four players that takes about one to two hours to play. It's designed by Antoine Bauza and based on a French role-playing game with the same name by John Grump. It's published by Studio H and they provided us with this review copy. The game comes with a main game board, player boards and figures, several decks of cards, wooden resources, tokens, and dice. The box insert has several compartments to store the components. I really like how that looks and works. Maybe other companies will do the same in the future. In the game, you take on the role of rangers who are protecting the inhabitants of the land and trying to rebuild their fortress. Your specific objective for each game is determined by the scenario you're playing and will be revealed as the game goes on. You'll take turns playing until you complete the last chapter of the Chronicle or immediately lose by dropping to zero on the prestige or defense track. Ooh, no. <laughs> Your turn has two phases, determining the adversity and then performing two actions. Rolling the adversity die shows how far you move the adversity marker. One step, two steps, or no steps. Most of the spaces on the adversity track bring out bad things, mm -hmm. like incidents, problems, and events. When you reach the Chronicle space, you flip over the next Chronicle card, like turning the page of a book. Sometimes the page will just have story elements, other times there will be events or even challenges for you to complete. After you resolve whatever effects there were from the adversity phase, you can then take two different actions. Often you'll be trying to deal with the bad things that are happening. If I want to deal with this problem, I first have to take an action to move there, and then I roll profession dice to try to get successes. I can roll three dice because there are two of that symbol in the fortress, and it also happens to match my character's profession. If there's no problems in a region, you can ask the community for aid to gain the resource or effect shown. If you're in the fortress and have enough resources, you can build a building. Most have a benefit, like increasing your defense or prestige, or giving the group another die for a specific profession. You don't want incidents to build up, so you need to take care of those as well. The back of the card shows the rumor, but the exact task is a mystery. The player next to you will read the card aloud and let you know if there's a test or choice, but you won't know what the consequences are. I happen to have Ooh. one right here. There's a rumor of an old Ooh, wizard. An old wizard. Are you ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. The disheveled and dirty old man has a disturbing appearance, mm -hmm. marked by madness, no doubt due to his unreasonable use of witchcraft. You have a choice. Okay. Do you avoid the oddball, or do you offer him the hospitality of the fortress? Oh, wow. Okay, so avoiding the madman probably is a good decision, but he has magic, so maybe if we're nice to him... He'll do something helpful for us. I have no idea what the answers are. So. You're choosing? Uh, okay, we're going to be risky here. Let's bring him into the fortress. All right. You must go to the fortress, which is an okay, immediate Okay, so taking action. my mm -hmm. character to the fortress. The wizard spends the night wandering through the fortress. He knocks over a candle that starts a fire, and you have a building that's now damaged. Ah! <laughs> Bad wizard. Should have just left him out into the cold. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this aspect of the game, the incident cards, remind me a little bit of the crossroad cards in Dead of Winter. Yeah. So you don't know what you're going to have to do or what the outcome will be. Sometimes you'll need to roll a certain profession. In one game, I was really trying to go after those military soldier tests, but I kept coming upon the traveling tests instead. Yeah, each game you'll have a combination of two incident decks that you shuffle together. Mm -hmm. And some of those decks are more heavily weighted to certain professions. If you clear a region from incident cards and have built a nearby tower, you can secure the region, which means no more incidents can appear there. Also, secured regions are important for the assignment cards. Completing the goals will make it easier to succeed at the end game challenge. So basically, you're going turn by turn trying to collect resources, uh, trying to clear problems, build buildings, and trying to do incidents to secure regions, and dealing with events and challenges. 
all the events are bad. There's like one sort of neutral one going to the fortress, but I wish there was like a mix instead with some good or at least some neutral. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot going on, so you do need to work together and play to your strengths. Each character has a special power that could guide your strategy, mm -hmm. although if you take too much damage, you lose your ability. Yeah, done that before. <laughs> Since you don't know what the final challenge will be at the end of the Chronicle, it's good to build a variety of buildings to up your dice in all the professions. Now what drew me to the game right away was the illustrations by my favorite artist in board gaming, Vincent Dutre. He does such amazing work. You have a lot of the art on the Chronicle cards, but also on the character boards. And I love the oversized wooden horses with the knights on them. They look good and they feel good as you're playing the game. This game is scenario based with six Chronicles you can play. But it's not a campaign. Nothing carries over from game to game and you can play them in pretty much any order. You can even replay scenarios. Especially if you lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll know the plot points and twists of the storyline, but you can pair it with a different assignment card to make it easier or harder. And of course, there are a lot of randomized elements like the event cars, problems, and incidents, so the game won't be completely the same. I think for both of us, there are certain things that we really liked in the game, and then some things that were just okay. I do like that there's some uncertainty with the adversity die. You don't know how far it's going to move mm -hmm. or even if you'll trigger the same thing again. But there's exceptions on two of the four spaces. You can't skip the Chronicle space or stay on it. So the die rolling mechanic is only useful um, for some of the time. It seems odd to me that there's a track and a die and then there's exceptions. It's not elegant. I wish there was just a better way. For me, the roll for success isn't my preferred mechanism. Yeah, some people really like it though. Yeah, I, I know it does add suspense and t tension, especially in a cooperative game, but I'd rather have more control over the outcome. <laughs> Fortunately, there are some ways to mitigate the dice rolls and prepare ahead of time to raise your odds of success. I agree, I thought the gameplay was fine, good even, but I was more interested in the story elements brought in through the Chronicles and the incident cards. That's what drew me into the game. I must admit though, I actually enjoyed uh, the adventures of Robin Hood from Cosmos just a little bit better. You can view that video right up there. I think Robin Hood combined unique gameplay and story elements well. Ultra has a lot going for it though, with great art, and I like the storylines. Overall, I've enjoyed my plays of Altre. With the random elements and the unknown story twists, it has been challenging, mm -hmm. but not demoralizing. Sure. I think you'll like this if you enjoy cooperative games that have story elements, things like Mansions of Madness, Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle Earth, mm -hmm. one of our favorites, yep. um, even Pandemic Legacy. Cooperative games are really popular right mm -hmm. now, so tell us in the comments what your favorite co-op game is. So if this one sounds interesting, check out Old Trey from Studio 8. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to our channel.